Hey, boys. Hey, boys. <laughs> Sweet boys. What up, big dogs? Sleepy baby. I just woke up from like a five-hour edible <laughs> nap. <laughs> from an edible nap. Yeah. That sounds fun. Dude, it was intense. Well, I had a, a crazy night this morning. So I went I went and hung out with mine and Jake's boy, the Cam- well, people, the Campbells, Moe's. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, we had some beers last night and just caught up and laughed and hung out. Mariah had a business trip this morning. Uh, I woke up at six because Mariah had to fly out at like f- she had to be at the airport at like five, five, I think, or four thirty or something like that. Mm-hmm. I wake up at six because their new their daughter woke up and Moses was still asleep and she was crying. So I got up, grabbed her and was taking her to Moses when Moses like runs out of the bedroom with a frantic look in his eye. He's like, you do you, you got to stay here? Watch the kids. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, Mariah doesn't have her. Her, her IDs in my wallet and the plane is about to board. Oh, oh shit! And uh, so at six Real o'clock, in the, I like it. <laughs> so at six <laughs> o'clock in the morning, I was like, "Dude, I'm heading that way anyway. I'll just be like mad early and take it on my way." I put on so at six o'clock in the morning, I put on my emergency blinkers and make like a thirty-five minute uh, drive in like twenty-five minutes, and nice. Uh, got her okay. her ID. And she boarded the plane like two minutes before they took off. Nice. Fuck yeah. Why did they even <laughs> let her? Dude, well, um, Charleston is a tiny airport. Mm, right. It takes like literally like eight minutes to get through. To get to, yeah. <laughs> you know, so like you ran through the airport to get it to her? No, I, she was just uh, waiting. And I just like emergency blinkers just <laughs> right up front, had the window <laughs> down, reached it out to her. Oh God! <laughs> How fast were you driving? Yeah, because I was going your- like most of the time I was going like ninety, probably. Jesus, oh, I don't. Shit. I would never. <laughs> Jesus, I would never get in the car with you going ninety. I hate <laughs> hell no. I want to get in a car with you going thirty. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, I've I've been in a car with you going everything and ninety, <laughs> never. <laughs> 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 oh, that's it's funny because you said it was a small airport and it's like what six in the morning so imagining like a 90 mile an hour car like, <laughs> no, one, it's like no one's there it's just like also wait time out cody is this the same car you had in new york yeah the little pontiac vibe oh my oh, god yeah. no yeah no, never you, did you, you fix your brakes go, yeah oh for sure i fixed my oh, brakes thank I, god what about the mirror uh no that's still no. Oh, <laughs> actually me and moses yesterday wedged some wood under it so it works a little bit better <laughs> <laughs> oh cody you're so ghetto I love west it. virginia in- ingenu- ingenuity <laughs> yeah, there we go <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I've had I, I've driven in cars that like when you go over eighty, it like starts to shake. Like, oh, so, like, it was happening. <laughs> it was Cody's going. car when we had to like drop off the tuxes and everything. The, the, the brakes were just, horrifying. Just, yeah, like oh, yeah. I had to replace the rotors too. They were fucked. Damn, I, they sound the car sounded it. <laughs> yeah. yes. dude, I drove all the way back from New York like that. Yeah, I love that you just drove to and from, and it's like, <laughs> well, no, it didn't start grinding until it got until I. Pulled Pulled into New York. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it was like that when you picked me up from the airport. Oh, dude, Anthony's it was terrifying. It by, was, the, was, by the time yeah. I pulled into, uh, dude, they were, there was nothing left on those brakes. <laughs> Crazy. Classic, Jeez. classic Cody driving. <laughs> <laughs> Cody behind a wheel is just as dangerous as your average Decepticon. <laughs> 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 like in regards to property and human life. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Like you, like you versus Starscream <laughs> would be a good battle. To see. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. 
<laughs> that would be a great Transformers villain, just Cody. Like he, he, Ooh, he yeah. causes Optimus Prime's death, and he's not meaning to. It's just like Cody, because of his recklessness. No. <laughs> Autobots, we're facing a true enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Even the likes of which we have never seen. <laughs> so Jake, you're wearing a bright red no. shirt, and you have white headphones. You fucking look like Optimus Prime right now. Yes, fuck yeah. <laughs> I send this signal out to anyone hiding among the stars. <laughs> <laughs> Cody must be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. awesome. But unfortunately, we're not here to talk about Cody murdering people with cars. No. <laughs> but we are here to talk about someone else murdering people. With cars. Yeah, too. yeah with, with cars. Too, there's, a few, there's a few car murders. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Some car murder, dude. In fact, the opening scene literally starts off with people murder. trying to rob his car. And exactly. Yeah, Cody's story felt very much like a uh, this character. <laughs> <laughs> it did, yeah. I think Cody, Cody and Logan have a lot in common. <laughs> and that we can't die. Well, welcome to Comics and Chronic, everyone. You already know who it is. Jake F.H., Anthony Iannaccio, Cody Cannon, and today we are talking the film Logan, starring Hugh Jackman, directed by James Mangold, and is, of course, based off of, loosely based off of, the graphic novel Old Man Logan with Wolverine. Oh, yeah, yeah, good point. Which is also something we talked about. I think it, it's going to pair well with this episode, which is, so go yes. check out episode 75 after this, which is Old Man Logan, one of our favorite comics. Ooh, Anthony with the numbers on, on deck. Bam. Exactly. Our episodes, you know, some pair well, like a nice Cabernet with a pork chop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a oh, yeah. mignon with some Chardonnay, very buttery Chardonnay. Yeah. I would not <laughs> pick Chardonnay for a filet mignon. No, yeah, I was... Uh... <laughs> yes. What? Did you just pull a Cody? <laughs> <laughs> I would pick a Pinot Noir, probably. Yeah, you should never put a pair of white with a red meat. Yeah. <laughs> it's blasphemy. It's, it's true. And Cody knows. He's like, he's like, he's the comic uh comics and chronic culinary expert. It's yes. me. I cook sometimes. I'm the second expert because I watch Hell's Kitchen a lot, but Cody's <laughs> the <number one. laughs> Cody's the Anthony, do you know how to cook? I would figure because you're Italian, you at least have some um, knowledge on how to I, cook. I think you could trust me to cook something, but like I'm not like I'm not cooking all the time, but I have some dishes that I could cook pretty well, but like nothing crazy. Like I can make a good, um, uh, so you guys ever see the movie Chef? Yes. No. The movie Chef? The movie is called Chef. It's with John Favreau, Scarlett it's Johansson. It's really fucking good. I've I love it. it. Well, he makes- John Leguizamo? John Leguizamo. Oh, yeah. Uh, you already know I love John Leguizamo. Now yeah, I that was the selling point for Jake. But <laughs> this movie, he makes a pasta dish for Scarlett Johansson, um, pasta olio. It's just like, it's just pasta. It's such a plain, easy to make dish. But to perfect it is like, it took me a few tries. But so oh. it's just pasta. Well, first you take some garlic, right? You slice it really thin. And then you put it in like some olive oil. Like you just like, you know, heat up the olive oil with the garlic. It, it's going to make your house smell really good. You're, you know, make some pasta, get some like linguine. Linguine is great for it. Or I like to do fettuccine because it's, you know, thicker. I like the fettuccine. Mm, you like that thick pasta. That thick pasta, exactly. <laughs> also, if you don't know, I'm Italian. So you have to take everything I'm saying. You could have fooled me based on yeah. the way you're telling us how you cook this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but it's literally it's literally just olive oil, garlic, uh, pasta, parsley, and some lemon. Like super simple dish to make, super cheap dish. But it's a banger. It's so good, but I can make you a good, yeah, it's a banger. I usually make it with some chicken too. Um, just add some protein to it. So I'll cook that for you if you guys want anytime. It's such a, I love to cook yeah. it and it's just like cook so easy to dish. dish. Yeah, it's good. That's... <laughs> 
That's my favorite part of Logan, how much he loves pasta and Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did think the Italian accent was a strange choice for Hugh Jackman. <laughs> 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 oh shit, before I forget, do you, were you guys there the day at ACI? It was one of our acting classes and Hugh Jackman was there? Yeah, oh yeah, yes, I, I was there. Yes. He was Dude, in the I elevator. I told people that story all the, no, he, yeah, he was, he was, he was coming a, out of class when we were waiting to go in. He was teaching a class yeah. before ours. You yeah, know? and he walked into the elevator. Yeah, yes. he, yeah, we saw him in the hallway going into the elevator. So we brushed shoulders with Wolverine yeah. himself. Dude, not even I, I don't know if I ever told you dick. guys. <laughs> <laughs> In the elevator. Yeah. That, I only needed two floors length of time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the elevator is not the only thing going down that day. <laughs> Dude, I, also, I don't know if I told you guys this, but in that same building, it would have been like one of our first classes because I couldn't find the fucking class. Dude, I like barged into this one class and I shit you not. Dude, it was Patty LaBelle teaching vocal classes. What the fuck? And she was like, she was like, can I help you? And I was like, uh, uh, Patty LaBelle, uh, no. And then I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was in that same building. <laughs> That's hilarious. It'd be funny if you really just walk in and you're just like, uh, uh, Patty LaBelle. And just walk out. <laughs> I, I, well, I walked in and she's like, can I help you? And I like registered. And I was like, oh, you're Patty LaBelle. And I was like, uh, no, sorry. And then went and found the class. <laughs> but I just wasn't expecting to see Patty LaBelle behind that door. I don't think I could pick out Patty LaBelle. Like if I would be like, oh, sorry. Like, I don't think I would know. <laughs> That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what Patty LaBelle looks like. It's more the voice. Once you hear those vocals, oh. <laughs> you can't forget it. Do you, do you think maybe the universe was pushing you? Because I remember, I remember, because I just listened to the BS episode, and you said <laughs> if you could, Cody asked us if we could download a skill for, for like a week, you said you would want to be like a, a expert singer. So, so like, I, I feel... Yeah, you said you would want to oh, sing. Yeah, yeah. We talked about nice, it for a little, but you landed nice. on that you would want to sing. So I don't know. Maybe you were meant to meet Patty LaBelle and be in the next. Maybe you, were, you're, you got to bring back Motown, Jake. I think that's what that she, means. Yeah. Me, yeah. <laughs> Nothing like a, a non black person to bring back a historically black genre. <laughs> And move out of the way. <laughs> I'm saving jazz and R and B. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But you know who else is saving jazz and R and B? <laughs> 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 Italian Logan. Now I just want to talk about Italian Logan. <laughs> <laughs> what if Logan was Italian? <laughs> yeah. Does anyone want to give a synopsis for our listeners? So um, we're going back to. 1947, <laughs> Sicily. <laughs> Post-World War II, Italy. <laughs> it's pu just putting the pieces back together. Yeah, exactly. Mussolini has fallen. Uh, Italian Logan is down on hard times. <laughs> the, the pasta factory is shut down. <laughs> the pasta factory. <laughs> This is this is Jake. Jake in your universe. You just have Logan, but he's Italian. Like he's just everything else. It's the only difference, literally. Is that he's Italian. I mean, he, he of course talks like Super Mario. Yeah. yeah. If, <laughs> if, instead of a cigar, he has like an Italian sausage hanging out of his. <laughs> I'm going to butcher this. I know it's not going to be a good impression, but he's got to say, like, I'm a, the best I am no matter what I do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you have destroyed your culture this entire recording. <laughs> I feel like a long time ago, everyone in America agreed that Italians are fair game, so. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's a me. <laughs> Italian Logan. We're, Italian we're using Logan. all our good Italian material, and then when we talk about the Super Mario movie, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I know, right? <laughs> I like that this is our good Italian material. <laughs> this is primo Italian comedy right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cody's about to die. <laughs> yeah. I guess this is oh. the po- time to point out that I'm smoking a strain called Green Lantern. Ooh. That's pretty cool. And it's 90% sativa. So I'm feeling the sativa today. It feels okay, good. I have to I have to ask. Now that you're feeling the effects of it, mm. and it's Green Lantern. Do you feel more Hal Jordan Green Lantern or John Stewart Green Lantern? Mm. I feel more like Guy Gardner or Green Lantern right now. Mm, so a racist cop from Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> we need to start a counter if you, I'm going to be a cop or a priest. <laughs> <laughs> there, are only, there are two wolves inside of you. <laughs> there are two wolves inside of you. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the worst wolves in the pack. A cop and a priest. <laughs> Which one are you gonna feed, Anthony? Uh, I really feel like for like Italian people, those are like the only two options in your life. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, Italian people know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Shout out. There's to a all lot of Italian, Italian cops. Listens. You know that. <laughs> oh, for sure. Especially in New York. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like mm. Half the police force is Italian. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, that was some good laughter, boys. <laughs> but let's actually talk about Logan because it's such a good movie. <laughs> like, it's, it's a great movie. Yeah, it's an amazing movie. I would say best superhero movie. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say that, but it's damn close. There's honestly one thing for me personally that prevents it from being the perfect superhero movie. Mm. What? I... I I still think it's cool. Like I do like it, but the whole like, oh, I'm gonna fight my clone version. This is me. What it would have been like if I let myself become an animal. It's like eh, I would rather you fight just like Sabretooth. Yeah, I kind of agree with Jake on that. It's not like a strike, but I get that. Yeah, yeah, it's just like it's not the strongest choice. Like I, I do think, like like time travel or like some other things, the clone thing kind of becomes a cop out after a while. But I think it is important to the story and to Wolverine. Yeah, in this, the way they made Logan, because they couldn't do like a. Per, like an identical translation it just wouldn't make sense with no, the movie I, I lore it, I, don't need, I don't need it to be a, an actual translation of the comic book i just think the choice of having it be uh, a clone version of him i would have rather just see him fight like saber tooth a future saber tooth who has devolved into this animal that logan is not saber tooth isn't in a deleted scene i think actually in the casino well, so they, you'll never be able to see it but there is they filmed something where leave schreiber he runs the casino in the movie yeah. where Charles has that crazy breakdown that or I don't even know if they filmed it so much as that was what was originally written. Oh, and they decided. Ult, 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 I don't know. But ultimately, they just decided not to go with it. OK, we should do a synopsis, though, because we do. We, we didn't do that here. Wait, let me grab another beer. You guys do the synopsis. What if instead of leave uh, hear it this? The other dude? No, Jake, Uh-oh. I want you to hear this. I'm listening. What if instead of leave, it was Omega Red? I would like that a lot. That'd be mm. sick. I would even like that. Like once again, like Omega Red would have been a cool villain. I, Omega Red is one of my favorite X Men. Omega villains. Red's it, great. This would have been perfect in that movie. It would have been so cool. I just think it's not even the worst choice. Like I don't hate it, but I just think the clone choice is is a weak writing. Yeah, choice. I don't think I need Omega Red for this movie. But also, I agree that yeah, like yeah, like it, it kind of surprised me when I did. see It's just the not clone. the strongest. Yeah, and it, but it didn't surprise me in a cool. Like I wasn't like blown right. away. I was like, it, oh, it's that's just, what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's cool. But. I think the reason the clone made sense is because that's why the organization was going to kill. Because instead of raising their own weapons, they're like, oh, we can just have a mindless one. Right. That's what they wanted. Exactly. And also, you know, there's obviously going to be the whole idea that Logan doesn't like himself for a lot of reasons, you know, like exactly. and I feel like him fighting himself highlights that him, himself all killing Charles. Right. Exactly. And then also, I mean, they never call her X-23, but that X-23 is also him. You know, it's his DNA. Yeah, it's his DNA. But I guess we should definitely give a synopsis. Do you have one? Or you want me to do it? I can do it. Go for it. All right. So it's the. It's the uh, near dystopian future. If you've read or listened to our 
Old Man Logan. It's the movie translation of Old Man Logan. It's a comic book Western. Yeah. Uh, in this storyline, Logan is doing shitty driving jobs and being an alcoholic because he wants to forget everything and his body's wasting away. His healing power is slowly drained, like weakening. It's not as strong. Yeah, yet. from the adamantium. Yeah. He's getting adamantium poisoning. I the, like that a lot, by the way. Yeah, it's such yeah. a good, It's a great, like, you know, comic book pseudoscience detail, because, like, it actually does make sense. You can, like, get lead poisoning, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. it kind of makes sense that, like, yeah, he's a mutant. Had he never been laced with adamantium, this dude would live to be thousands, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But because he's getting, like, his, I even, like, read about it, or, not, you know, read about it, but, like, they were like, oh, like, technically speaking, ever since he got adamantium, he's been being metal poisoned continuously for years. And it's just like slow down his healing factor over the course of time. Yeah. And um, what I love about that is that like he was fierce regardless, but when he got that adamantium, it took him to a level. Stop. Yeah. A new level of ferocity and like Cody behind the wheel. <laughs> yeah, C- Cody by himself, ferocious. Put him in a car. <laughs> oh, Cody in a car is like when Logan got the adamantium skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> Cody in a car versus Batman with prep time. That's tough. I don't know. I, Co- Cody wins that game. <laughs> Just based on unpredictability alone. Un- yeah, sheer unpredictability. <laughs> Batman Batman's will be like, I have it. I never planned for that. Yeah. He'll be like, I have it all figured out, then I'll just fall asleep at the wheel. And I was yeah. Like, yeah. it's like, yeah, even if I knock him unconscious, he's still dangerous behind the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it's taking place in the future. Logan is dying, getting killed by the thing that makes him so feared and monstrous. You know what I mean? Like, mm. uh, people have been, and he, people have like tried to take it from him. Tried to kill him over it for decades upon decades. You can't do it. Can't do it. On top of that, he's a mutant and people are fucking hunting him all the time for that too. Yeah. Uh, In this timeline, the mutants have been killed off. And in a twist, you find out that it's a lot of it was due to Charles Xavier, that he had a brain Mm. seizure and And killed the X-Men, killed the X-Men. And it's you That's see a, cool a couple twist. of it's different from the comic, but I like very it. different, but it works perfectly for the movie. And I do. Yeah. Like, I love that. I mean, I know we're skipping around here, but the scene where Charles dies mm. and or no, he's if you, before he dies, still the same. He's in the farmhouse. He's going to bed. He's like it's such a beautiful night, but I don't deserve it. I did a terrible thing. Yeah. And he like, you know what I mean? Like, damn, like he killed his whole like school. Yeah, he's but Logan he killed the X Men team, and mm-hmm. Logan obviously because of his healing factor, he's probably survived. You know? Yeah, but Logan's yeah. been keeping him so drugged that Sedated. most of the time he doesn't remember it. Yeah, and you could tell Logan resents him the whole time. He's just like, "Fuck you, Xavier." Yeah, but like he loved him too. Like he's crying. Oh, it's, it's Char- his father. Charles yeah, died. yeah. Because Charles yeah. cared about him. I mean, you know, he knows that Charles would never like right. intentionally try to hurt the. X-Men. Yeah. And that's what I really fucking love about this movie. You take away every single superhero element and it's just such a fucking good like family drama, you know? It it works just great as like it's it's one of those few movies like where you're just like this doesn't have to be a superhero movie. It's it's exactly. well, James not. Mangold like, when you, when you is an it, incredible like Western, director. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a it's a straight up western. Yeah. He did straight up western. He did like the 2000s Christian Bale remake of 310 to Yuma. Yes, that and movie's sick, dude. That movie's so good. That movie's so underrated. Christian underrated. Bale, Russell Crowe. Yeah. Dude, ben Insane. Foster, Am I making that up? Who? Ben Foster? Ben Foster? Oh, yeah, he's in it. He's in it, yeah. Dude, that's Angel crazy. himself. Angel. <laughs> 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 Who could forget that classic X-Men last stand character? He's also <laughs> making the new Indiana Jones, which is pretty wild. Dude, James Mangold don't play. Yeah. Yeah, I like him a lot as a filmmaker. You know, he's a good director. Shout out to James Mangold. Yeah. Shout out. Loyal listener of the pod. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, you, I think we also have to remember that this fucking movie was, like, after, like, The Wolverine, which is also James Mangold. It's not a bad movie, but it's not Logan. And then fucking before that, Wolverine Origins, you know? Like, terrible. X-Men 3 before that. We had to suffer through some really shitty Wolverine to get to Logan. Well, it's kind of cool. They like, they, like, nailed the tone down of Wolverine on the third movie. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Because Wolverine Origins is, like, it's not good. I hate it. It's that honestly sucks. atrocious. The, yeah, the Wolverine, Wolverine is, is not that bad. It's, but it's not fine amazing. at best. Not, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. It's like exactly. a solid, like, 
five out of ten. Yeah, so not terrible. Yeah, it's, but it's mid. Not it's mid. It's, it's, it's mid. It's mid. <laughs> And also the fact that they tease his like classic costume at the end, but he never wears it, which is something that Fox Yeah, but it was does, such a cool like, looking costume. Cr- it was a great looking costume. It's like, why can't we see Wolverine in the, his costume? Mm. And it does set up Days of Future Past, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and that's also what I like Days about- Days of Future Past was great. Yes. I liked I, it a lot. Well, yes, it was. I, I also, just, what I don't like is that like, I think Logan should end, like I don't, okay. I don't know how I feel about Wolverine being in the new Deadpool movie. I mean, like it's yeah. cool. I'm it's cool, but it's like, dude, too. we saw the final story. Right. Like, I'm, Why? I stop bringing dead. him back. Yeah, stop bringing him back. Stop bringing superheroes back. Let them die. That was that was awesome. Cast somebody new. Yeah, he was great, but his story ended. Yeah. Let him be. Yeah, exactly. Like, t- even if you want to do another Wolverine movie, fine. Pick a young new actor. Let's reboot this shit. I think, honestly, and especially from this movie, and just because I'm a huge fan of X-23, the girl that plays Laura in this movie, they never call her X-23, right? Yeah, Which is yeah. interesting. But you know it is, because X-24 is the name of the, the Wolverine clone. She should be Wolverine in the MCU. But I thought on the, like, there's a scene in the movie where you see her you, you see her paperwork and it says maybe like, it says it maybe but they never say like the, it you get what i mean 20, like it's yeah, never yeah, yeah, like of course they're never like x23 get over here yeah but i think she should really be same actress same character maybe not same character whatever multiverse shenanigans she's like in this movie she's a little kid but x23 you know obviously she should be older she should be like x-men teenager you know like how miss marvel peter parker age young adult you can get the same actress. She's currently in that HBO show based off of the uh, Yeah, what, so she's I know exactly what you're talking about. I think she's great and I Compass. think she should be she should be Wolverine in the MCU. I agree. Don't like Hugh Jackman's in Deadpool. I don't know if Deadpool's taking him from a different time period if it's an alternate Wolverine. I'm here for it actually. I've heard that it's like Deadpool kills the Marvel universe is going to be the premise of this. Yeah, and that yeah. would be cool too. I think the Deadpool movies have been hits for me. I'm not going to say I <laughs> I like more- them a lot. Both of them are more hit than a lot of Marvel movies. And a lot of X-Men movies. Yeah, exactly. And if Hugh Jackman comes back for it, I trust him. You know, it's probably for a paycheck. Why not? But like, Oh, for sure. You See, know? that's what bothers me on a, on a thespian level. It's because he was on Graham Norton with Patrick Stewart, and they were talking about it, and they both were talking about how they, when they watched it in theaters, the two of them sitting next to each other cried, and and Patrick was like, this is the perfect like ending. And Hugh Jackman was like, seriously, really, it's, like, it's yeah. beautiful. And it's like, but that's what I mean. It's like Marvel probably paid Hugh Jackman like a boatload of money. And Patrick Stewart him. already came back. We've seen him already, which is even funnier. Yeah, That's what I mean. It's like these actors probably were like, you better pay me a shit ton of money if you want me to come back. Yeah. But it's still the end of the characters. It may not be the last time they play them, but I think but I it's accurate. It was. I think there's more impact I agree, and beauty but, to the art if there is. But superheroes always come back to life and like it's it's not art. You know, like in some ways it should like this movie <gasps> Whoa, feels like easy Martin Scorsese on <laughs> <Martin Project. laughs> <laughs> this movie, no, this movie, oh, this movie is hard that, for sure, right? That's the only way Anthony's an Italian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, sh- you shit on the genre we love. <laughs> no, but like, this movie feels like a completely different, it's in a completely different sphere. You know, like it, like we just said, it feels like it's just like take away the superhero I mean, superhero it's up there with Dark Knight. Like Logan yes, and Dark Knight absolutely. are probably the two best comic book adaptations. Yes, I agree. I'm just saying like, uh, and sorry, Cody, I feel like you got something to say. Let me no, say one fine. more thing. Logan, Shut Logan, up, <laughs> like coming back for this. And I mean this about Deadpool three, like, like, yes, it's dumb, but like Logan coming back in Deadpool three, like it's still going to be cool. Like, wh- you know, we want to see fucking secret wars and Logan's there and fucking everyone's there. Like we want to see it at this point. Do we, Anthony? I mean, it's at this point. Why not? Who cares anymore? Like they're gonna turn out the shit no matter what. (laughs) See, that's what I'm saying. I don't care. I want to see it. It's gonna happen. So, like, might as well do it. We can't stop it, right? So, you know who said that? People who went along with the Holocaust. <laughs> There's no coming back from that one. <laughs> <laughs>
I love that you spit out your beer. <laughs> I was about to just, like do a spit take. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Touche, my friend. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually go hit the bong. Fuck yeah, dude. Oh God, that, <laughs> I feel like I hit the bong just from that laughter alone. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> Dude, that was nice. <laughs> Thank you. That needs to be a clip. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's a great clip right there. <laughs> 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 but yeah, dude, fucking this movie is I just like based on tone acting, dude. Patrick as Char- uh Charles. Beautiful. Like beautifully acted. Uh, one of the best supporting acting roles in any comic book movie, period. That's what I mean. Like this movie deserves so much more credit than being a you know what I mean? Like this is good fucking film. The score, like everything this it, it, this is like the as good as a superhero movie is going to get. I mean, like even I, I know they're two completely different movies, but they're, they're, they're meeting closer as tone wise. They're not touching, but they're meeting. And we talked about, you know, dark Knight. this also like winter soldier. Like, yeah. The mm, more I agree serious, with that, you're saying, you know yeah. what I mean? Like the more like grounded you try to make these superhero movies. I feel like the like, higher the stakes. Yeah. The higher the stakes. Like, I just feel like that's what makes a good comic book film. Right, but going back, like, you trying to be a bit more serious just because <laughs> when I was saying it's not art, it's just, like, uh, may, that. maybe that's the wrong thing to say, but what I'm trying to say is exactly that. Like, Winter Soldier, Dark Knight, Logan, they feel more like films, and th- that's the word I want to use, films. Like, it's more of, like, a coherent story. It's more like, or maybe what I'm trying to say is they just follow a genre better, whereas when Marvel says other movies are like this, it's really not following the genre. It's just an MCU movie, whereas Logan's a Western, like we're saying. Whereas Winter Soldier is like a spy thriller. Whereas Dark Knight is, is it also a spy thriller? Well, I mean, it's not a thriller. Well, how would you define yeah. Dark Knight? Like It's a thriller. Uh, no, like I agree. It is a thriller. I, I would but describe you know Dark Knight like, as almost like a, a thriller heist also. thriller. <laughs> well, so Christopher Nolan, this is, this is even on record, the opening scene of Dark Knight, he has very much stated in audio, he's based it off of Heat, the heist at the end of Heat. Yeah. Which is nice. Robert De Niro, Al Pacino. And uh, that's an awesome movie. And I don't mean to say other MCU movies or other superhero movies don't have elements of this. And like, that's why obviously the MCU gets people who are like real filmmakers. And when I mean that, I mean like someone like Ryan Coogler comes on to do Black Panther, you know, like he's done crazy indie films that are like successful and well-made. And like, he has a track record of making movies, but like uh, more recent movies are just MCU cookie cutter stuff. And, and Logan wasn't that Logan wasn't the X-Men movies we saw. It wasn't the Wolverine movies we saw. It yeah. wasn't any of the superhero movies we saw. Like it stands apart. It's also not Disney. It's Fox. Exactly. Ooh, good point. You know what good I mean? Point. Logan was not made under Disney. It was made under Fox. Great yeah. point. So it's a different like thing altogether. Different animal. Different now. <laughs> Same with like, dude, Into the Spider Verse, great movie. It's not Disney and Marvel. It's Sony, right? Sony. So it's Good like, point. like we I'm don't like, like the homogenization of of exactly. what's going on. Exactly, dude. I want to see different takes on these characters. Yeah, Logan. Like, that's the one of the things we complain about in, throughout the MCU is that it's all rather than Logan feeling like a kind of Western family drama movie which is also very much the tone of the comic yeah yes Ooh, that's a great point that's a great point you know so i would argue that while there were some different choices that had to be made to make it make sense within the fox x-men universe stylistically it's one of the most comic accurate movies out there yeah, like I didn't walk into that movie expecting like Venom T Rex, although it would have been kind of cool. But like, it wasn't that kind of movie, and I'm glad it wasn't. I'm glad it's like not the movie. Like, I think a good point also is like, I, I don't know. I would agree with this. Maybe how, how do you guys feel about this? Like, does the audience really know what they want, or would you rather see a filmmaker just make their thing? And like, you know what I mean? Like, you would never think of Hereditary, and that's like, you know what I mean? Like, you but you love it because you're like, yes, I didn't know I needed that, but uh, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like. Don't give us what you think we want because it's going to be trash. Well, I also like going back to like 
the homogeneity of Marvel, don't give us the same tone for every character movie. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. I like that Matt Reeves' The Batman is incredibly different from, you know, every other DCEU. It's even different from The Dark Knight. Let's throw that movie into those movies that we said earlier. Because that's like, dude, that movie, like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, hey, you already know I love The Batman. But that movie for me, like, blew me away. Like, when I was watching, I went to go see that movie like five times in theaters. I was like, this movie's fuck yeah. This is the best detective Batman movie. Yeah, like, dude, like yes. these these more serious takes. It doesn't have to be like, woohoo! Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it also doesn't. It's not like so dark that you don't enjoy it. There's some like, Zack Snyder. <coughs> there's some yeah, there's some heartwarming moments in this movie, especially with Patrick Stewart with the dog, Logan's and relationship Laura. with Laura. Yeah, Laura. yeah, like there's some like endearing moments, and you're just like, dude, this is awesome. Yeah, when she takes care of him, when yeah. and when he when you think he's or when he almost dies and when she finally calls him father yeah Dude, like when all the kids are like cutting his beard and he looks like classic comic book yes. logan and they're all laughing they're like yeah they're all laughing like, ha, ha, ha. i love that i was like nice that's the old man logan right there yeah i also love so um in the movie in the hotel they're watching the movie shane do you guys know that movie yes yes yeah. yes, yes. That's my dad's favorite movie. And I never watched it until like after I saw Logan. But like if you watch Shane, it's like you see where Logan is getting some influence. You know, like the story of Shane is like this guy comes to town. He's like, you know, he's he's just a like a cowboy that comes through towns. You know, he's a good guy, but like he's got a gun and like he'll protect you. But like he's not here to do it's that. the speech she gives at the end when he dies. Yes, exactly. It's like it's a Shane. great movie, but like it adds this layer to the movie that like because the movie is about like you know, Logan's a dad. He's like, he's begrudgingly a dad. You know, he doesn't, he does not really want anything to do with her for most of the movie. Like, yeah. I don't know, like that, that kind of thing is like, damn, that you're not seeing that in, in, in other superhero movies quite the same way. No, not at all. Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. This movie, I'm not just saying this, like, and it, maybe it's not the case because other people aren't like as invested in the characters, but I legitimately cried twice in theaters. It's a sad movie. Once when Charles died and once when she took the cross and turned it into an X. Yes. Oh, that's so sad. Right, dude. Not going to lie. That shit will hit you hard. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Seriously. I, like, I was like, Seriously. I, I, I cried too also. And at the time when it came out, I think I was dating a girl. She had never seen it. And she cried at the end. Yeah. And like that, the, the, the movie's like, it's fucking good. Dude. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. When you talk about perfect endings, it's absolutely. I didn't is. cry when Jane Foster died. I was like clapping, yeah. jumping out of my seat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was like, cancer could not have come sooner for anyone else. (laughs) (laughs) The guy that was sitting behind me in quantum mania definitely cried when Jane Foster died. That is the lamest. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know if he did. I'm pretty sure he did. He probably did. But no, it's like, it's a very emotional movie. And that's another thing. Like it actually makes you feel like I I don't feel when I watch a lot of these newer MCU projects, No, like that's a big part of movies. I want to feel something when I come out of a movie, you know, I don't want to just be like, okay, I watched it. You know, like I got to feel something. Dude. Also like this movie on, on an editing level is great. He, she puts up the X, you know, he's dead. Boom, Logan, big ass letters and Johnny Cash's man yes. comes to town. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's fucking, like, that's like, I was like, nice, perfect. That's a solid ending for Wolverine. And then the post credit scene where he, like, wakes up and he's in the Mushroom Kingdom and he's like, <laughs> oh shit, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go save the princess. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, Logan will be back in <laughs> yeah, Super Mario Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> And it, you hear a violin version of na 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 na. That's how you ruin Logan in like one in less than a minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But so oh, yeah, God. you know, I'm kind of eating my words what I'm saying before. That's basically what Deadpool three is doing, more or less. Yeah, for sure. Unless he takes him before he dies, you know, it's not technically interfering. Like he drops him off. Like, what if this is dumb? This is really dumb. The end of Deadpool 3 is dropping off him and it's the beginning of Logan. That's why he's so fucked up. Like, nah. he's more fucked up. Oh, I don't want to see... That's the thing. Is like, honestly, I'd leave Logan alone. It can't touch 
yeah, yeah. you can't touch Logan. I don't want That's a great point. Touch or not like yeah, it's kind of like old man Logan up. the comic. How it's like perfect is just a standalone. Body. It's just a great one shot alternate. Yeah. Like what if like you know this happened? Like it was great. I remember reading it. And I was like, this is this is a great comic. Like I would highly recommend Old Man Logan. Yeah, I mean, we have we have highly recommended. Yeah, Old Man Logan. Go see our episode. And again, I I know you you guys definitely won't agree with this, but they did make Old Man Logan after that. When Jonathan Hickman did Secret Wars, there was like a four-issue Old Man Logan series where he comes to the MCU because of Secret Wars. And then now he's in the I'm in the MCU, the 616 universe. Yeah. And then now that he's in the main Marvel universe, he gets like a whole series and like he cross paths with X-23 and all this stuff. <laughs> There's some cool stuff. Nah, there's some. Here's the thing, facts. like big time. But facts. hold on, like you, you say snooze fest, but like that's fine. But like, but like in comics, like by this point, we have to accept superheroes are always going to come back. They're always going to recycle everything. Like, I think there's good stories even in the trash, is what I'm saying. You're all about just accepting these awful things. No, because okay, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and say read the 40 issue Old Man Logan series, but I think like. They're like Jeff Lemire does some old man Logan and it's not bad. You know what I'm saying? Like there's stories where like they use him and it's still like an interesting read. Like it's not complete trash and there's still stories to tell. Like why not? Like, but I get to that point. Like, yes, don't, I'm not saying it's like a good thing, but there's still good stories in those, you know, throwaways, I guess, if you want to call them. Let's talk about some of our favorite scenes from the movie. Cause I feel like we've been talking about the movie, but we haven't actually talked about things that like specifically happened. Okay, I'll go with one of my favorite. Honestly, and I really like Stephen Merchant as Caliban. That was cool. Yes. Stephen Merchant as Caliban Great. was cool. Not going to lie. Uh, it's hard to, 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 like, every single action sequence fucking rips. Oh, dude. Yeah. From the, the op- opening. Oh, sorry. From the opening scene when those dudes are trying to jack his rims and he just brutally murders them. Yeah. But only after they like kick the shit out of him, low key. Yeah, they like and shoot he, like, him and stuff. They shoot him and he gets back up. And that's also cool. He gets shot with a shotgun to the chest. He's like die. He's like struggling on the floor, and it just says Logan. Yeah. And you have this like hip hop that's playing in the background, and they're still trying to jack his rims. And then he gets up and he's like, "Don't fuck with me," or you know whatever he says. And his pops his claws, but like one of them like stops, and he's like, "Oh shit!" And they like start beating him with all these like weapons, and then. He's like getting jumped on the ground. I just watched it last night. And then he like fucking, he's like, ah! no, yeah. I love, like I'm a huge fan of whenever Wolverine bursts into his classic feral, berserker. Rage. Yeah, yeah. feral, feral berserker rage. Like that's always my favorite, even from the, the comics to the TV shows to the video games. Like I'm a big yeah. fan of Wolverine going berserk. Oh yeah. I also like in this movie, like it's like Cody said, a dystopian future, but it's only 2029. That's only like, but that's what I like about it. Cause like the parts where they show like, you know, this, this story's future America. Yeah. It's cool. It's not even like, it like feels crazy real that far. Exactly. It feels real. It doesn't feel like that crazy out there with flying cars, blade runner. It's like, Oh, right. This could be, you know, the most futuristic thing kind of is how the, I don't know the bad guy's name, but he's a reaver. Like in the X-Men there's reavers, yes, like there's reavers they have robotic the parts. That dude's great. He was also the fucking um, Corinthian in the Sandman Netflix. Basically yeah, yeah. the same character, just dude with sunglasses, being nefarious, kicking ass. Yeah. yeah. That guy. I like Holbrook, him as a villain. I like him a lot. He did a great Boyd, job. As Boyd a- Holbrook is his name. He was the DE agent in the first two seasons of Narcos. He's good. I like him as an actor. Yeah. He yeah. He's killed. great. He killed. He killed. I, I be love surprised the scene. if we see him in the MCU at some point later on. Just Ooh, because, maybe. You know, yeah. Yeah. He like he's like, he's just a very marketable person, white, blonde haired, all American. You know what I mean? Yeah, he was you great. Put him in a lot of things. Yeah, do I cool. know what you mean? I don't know. What are you suggesting? No, I mean, dude? Anthony, <laughs> you definitely know what I mean. <laughs> Based on t- tonight's prior. What? But yeah. I love the logic in your mind to get to that. <laughs> Cody knew what I meant. He left. I knew what you meant, but it doesn't make sense. Does it, Does it have to make sense? No. <laughs> to be good and hilarious. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, he was a great villain. The first time he and his gang show up to take to kill X twenty three and stuff is a great scene. That whole yes. scene, that whole action sequence is sick. That's my favorite scene in the movie. The favorite, my favorite action scene, I should say. Nice. Like the fight, like it's great. Dude, really? Uh, that's your favorite scene? Interesting. The fight with Laura, like kicking ass and like taking out no, it's everybody. Great. I'm not saying it's bad at all. I really like it. No, yeah. but there's so many good ones. The one in the casino when Charles is having the seizure. <sighs> 
That's and everybody's it. like frozen, and Logan's like climbing oh, along the wall. Oh, and- yeah. <laughs> Gutting Dude, and, like, people all the, in the throat. All, all, the, all the soldiers are frozen, and the, yeah. the most they can do is like move their eyes to Logan. They're terrified. And Logan's like, yeah, they're terrified. And Logan just like claws them. Dude, there's a part where Logan claws a dude in the head, pulls it out, and because yeah. of Charles, he's still standing there, but you know he's dead. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I should mention that this time I watched the movie Logan Noir, so it's all in black and white, and it That's fucking cool. ruled. Like, I, it, it I highly suggest checking out that version, especially if you've seen the movie like us, like a million times. Like, that is I liked cool. it. It like added another layer to the movie that made it seem even more like. I really do have to say this: I wouldn't be the person to be be like superhero movies need to be serious and dramatic because I feel like Zack Snyder took that in a direction I didn't like. You know what I mean? Like, and it made a lot of superhero movies for a while try to be too dark and gritty on the DC side. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. But Logan isn't that. Like, it, it, Logan is what I would mean when I say I want superhero movies to be, like, serious. And, like, the going back to Stephen Merchant's character, like, that added humor to it that was that worked, you know? And you still, he was still a character, like, you know, when he was getting burned by just sunlight, you're like, oh, shit, Caliban. Yeah, Caliban. Yeah. So, like, the movie's really good at making you care, even about those kids, you know? The, the kids that they have to save at the end who are those all, like... fucking kids. They got some X Men powers going on. Yeah, those kids were cool. That that scene, see, my favorite fight is when at the end of the movie, when Wolverine fucking gives himself takes the, the juice, takes the yeah. juice, and goes, <laughs> yeah, and just goes on that berserker rage through the woods. Yeah, you know what I mean. He just cuts down every soldier. He fucking flies at that one dude, and like, just, yeah, like that scene for me is like, oh, it's classic Wolverine. Yeah, yeah it was awesome. murderous. Yeah. And at, oh man, if I'm picking my favorite scene though, and it's going back to like one of the saddest moments of the movie, it's after it's all said and done. He's like, you know, down for the count, and and Laura goes up to him, and she's like, she sees that he used it, and she's like, you used the medicine, like she's like so sad about it and so angry, and then he gives her the line, he's like, don't be what they made you. That line is so fucking good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like for Wolverine to say that to her too is just like. He's just a weapon his whole life. Well, it's also what 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 like Charles has been telling Wolverine since he got to his school. Yeah. Right. He's like, you don't have to be the animal they've turned you into. Right. Because at this point in his life, it seems like he has become more of like the opposite because of what ha- what's happened. Like he's not the Logan. We've I mean, he's seen literally like- a limo driver. He like he's a drug addict now for painkillers. You know, mm-hmm. like he fucking all he does is take care of a crippled Charles Xavier inside of a makeshift Cerebro thing. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, which yeah. I actually like that. I like that they kept him in this like, you know, ghetto cerebro dome thing. And also, I don't know if you caught this because we've seen X Men, right? So like, we see Cerebro, and when Cerebro's lit up, there's like points of light. And in this, the dome has like holes, holes in, it. in it, and it looks like that because of the sunlight coming yeah. through. Like that's such a fucking good detail. Come on, that's so cool. It is a great detail. That is great. Yeah, James Mangold. It's- Fucking knows what he's doing. Oh, yeah. Damn it. Are we at the Nexus, boys? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. what else is there to talk about? You know what I also did like was, I do like at the end, the one of the 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 children or whatever, had like raises all this wood and sticks and like tears that dude apart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The way they use their powers is so cool. Yeah, dude. When they kill the, the, the main guy with the arm and they all like stand over him, they're like, <laughs> Doing all crazy shit. Yeah, yeah, they look so creepy. Yeah, yeah. they look so creepy as fuck. It was <laughs> awesome. That would make me hate mutants. Like that would make me a conservative. <laughs> like fucking mutants. <laughs> <laughs> like if you were just like walking your dog in the woods and you saw that. Happening. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. I was like, oh, damn, <laughs> like, oh shit, dirty mutants. <laughs> you got your phone out. You're like, look at these fucking kids. Like, look at these uh, kids. Yeah, dude. Um. Also, you know this <laughs> is a good movie. You know, this is a good movie because it makes me care about families. Ah, oh, there you go. And Cody, mm. as you know, we all know, has very little love for family that's not his own. <laughs> like, I was heartbroken when that family that took him in gets murdered. Dude, yeah. there was a, uh, for a while there on the internet, there was a point of criticism about that scene. And that it was that the only black characters in the film get murdered brutally. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that does make sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I may not doubt James Mangold did that on purpose. Like he's like, yeah, Do fuck you? this black family. I hope I not. Know. Like I don't think he's that kind of guy. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Do you know him? But it's still, know. you know, it's still a criticism to to keep in mind for Indiana it Jones. Is val- <laughs> it's, it is a valid criticism in that it's like, yeah, kind of like be a little like more aware in that the only black people you had in the entire film 
get slaughtered limb from limb by you know what I mean? Like maybe yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. For sure. Other than that, fuck that family. <laughs> <laughs> no, I liked them. They were sweet people. Dude, did you do you guys recognize the dad? No. No. I expect Cody to, but not Anthony. So the, the dad man. is uh the love interest boyfriend in the original Eddie Murphy's Coming to America. He's oh, the Jerry Curl. Nice. Yep. He's the one who who originally is dating Mr. McDonald's daughter, and then Eddie Murphy takes some. <laughs> That's awesome. And then of course Elisa Neal plays a. Uh, Elise Neal, sorry, plays uh, what's her, the mom in this. Yeah, yeah. I I do want to say X twenty three is one of my favorite characters in Marvel. I think one of my favorite mutants. I would highly suggest if you like X twenty three to read fucking read this book. It's called All New Wolverine, written by Tom Taylor. Ooh. This is a great series. Highly recommend it, especially if you like Logan and you want to see what uh, X twenty three is all about. It's like a newer series. You could hop right in. They introduce new characters, so you could follow like these new characters along since they're introduced. Like, there's clones of X twenty three, so it goes even deeper. Nice, cray cray bananas. I think we've reached the Joe Pesci nexus. Yeah, the JP. Hell yes. I see the event horizon of the Joe Pesci <laughs> <laughs> nexus. You know what it's getting from me, boys. You know exactly what it's getting from me. If you don't know, now you know. Yeah, six 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 Ooh, the drums. I don't think we've ever played it long enough for the drums to kick in. Yeah, it's, I'm glad that this is the first six 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 we've put out in a long in a while. In a it feels long like a while. Time. I, I part of me yeah, felt like a being a dick at first and saying giving it a five, but what? That would just be lying to myself. Yeah. If Mortal right? Kombat gets a six six six, <laughs> Mortal Kombat yeah, like is the even... gauge of all. <laughs> I feel like it's one of the few movies where we like we didn't even think about it. We're just like six. It was an instinctive six. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It got what it deserved. <laughs> if you listen to a lot of our episodes, then you know, like, this is an absolute amazing movie. Like, this is, you know, like Jake said, we talked about Winter Soldier. I think that would be my favorite MCU movie. If we're going to rank best comic book movies, this doesn't beat, Win- I mean, this does beat Winter Soldier. I'm sorry. So I would, I would say agree. probably at this point, just off the top of my head, but like having seen all these movies, Dark Knight, Logan, Winter Soldier, The Batman. I agree with that lineup completely. Nice. I Fuck would that. honestly go Logan, Dark Knight, Ooh, uh, okay, but Winter Soldier, the Batman. But I, I can respect a man who does, but I, I nice. personally can't do that. Yeah. No, I get it. But I guess I want to do ask, like, so Cody, like, what makes this in for you better than the Dark Knight? Ooh. Uh, just, I think, clo- the closure of it. The mm. It was the perfect ending. You know what I mean? Uh, I think it's probably aged better than The Dark Knight too. You think it's aged better than Dark Knight? Yeah, but it's such a—that's a hard oh, comparison, on, on honestly, because like it came out in like what 2017, Logan? Yeah, like, it it's came not out that way old. After. Has it aged? <laughs> <laughs> Six <laughs> years ago, <laughs> Dark Knight came out in 2008, right? Yeah, yeah. so a decade earlier. Yeah, <laughs> but I think to that point, I think it will stand the test of time. Like especially like we're saying, like the future, it feels real. Like it, it a part of it is about climate change without being so direct about it. Like they need to keep like moving, like because like there's droughts or something. Like everyone needs to, you know, Wolverine versus the climate change. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would say it's goes Wolverine, then Dark Knight, then Winter Soldier. Then I might mm. put 89 Batman, then the Batman. I don't know. Mm. Ooh, I, I'm a huge fan of 89 Batman. I like that. It ranks up there very high. Just at a personal bias. We should 100% do an episode on that. We should. Movie. I would love to rewatch it again. See Jack yeah. Nicholson yeah. as Joker. Yeah, Same. let's do it. Same. And for that matter, The Dark Knight, we should do too. Obviously. Oh, yeah. I can't believe we have not done The Dark Knight. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of, like, we're up to like over 100 episodes, and there's still so many, like, great things we haven't talked about. So stick around, hey, folks. Yeah. We'll yeah. get there, you guys. We'll get there. <laughs>
All right, well, thanks for tuning in as always. We appreciate your support. Keep on listening. Go check us out at Comics, the letter N, Chronic, at Instagram, Twitter. Also, uh, what do you guys want from us? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you want? What do you want from us? <laughs> no, I mean, like, <laughs> uh, well, what are some things we like to hear from you? We love how interactive our fans are. What are some things that. that you guys would love to see from us in the future? What would make you guys happy? Let us know, and we'll make sure to not do it. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Fuck you guys. Y'all also, know what us. I feel like we. Ha- I feel like we haven't mentioned the hotline in a while. We haven't gotten any calls in a while. I think. I think the hotline. Ooh, go ahead. Mention that hotline. <laughs> that number that I got memorized. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely none of have, us have part of it memorized. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here we go. Here we go. Our hotline number is 929-483-6889. Once again, that number is 929-483-6889. Call us there, you know, ask us questions. Tell us you love us. Give us compliments. Yeah, 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 let me know how much you like my hair. Insult us. If you have a good (laughs) joke, we'll laugh. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah, if you do a good roasting of one of us. We will kill you and thank you at the same time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We will do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got it. We got to. We got to check on Cody. So we'll we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, peace out. Later. Hi, you're listening to Comics and Chronic, and I'm Jake F.H. I'm Cody Cannon. And I'm Anthony Iannaccio. And you can tune in every Thursday to hear new episodes of Comics and Chronic. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Comics and Chronic. That's Comics, the letter N, Chronic. We'll see you guys next week. Woo! Peace.